After the update, these two devices are exactly identical in terms of the UI, which is the user interface, or the home screens. We're not going to focus on any of that. Watch the individual videos of these if you want to check that out. You see you have the same things on both of these devices. Please do not get too confused. They are exactly the same. Pause the video at any point in time if you want to read any of these things side by side, but there aren't any differences between that. You can see really the only differences software wise is that the Oasis 2 has night light, gradually decreases screen brightness over time as your eyes adjust to the darkness, and page turn buttons, and that's because the Paperweight 4 doesn't have page turn buttons. But that's not why we're here, we're here to look at the screen sizes, not just tell you everything that's the same. So something that is very different on the reading experience is this. If we tap the top right corner, we have disable touchscreen, which you would think, you can pause the video if you wanna read that, which you would think, well, that doesn't make sense on the Kindle Paperwhite 4, because if I disable the touchscreen, nothing works. But it does work if you swipe the page, not if you tap the side, it doesn't do anything. Tapping anywhere will not work. So you can swipe the page. Now. Doing it on the Oasis 2, you're like, oh, I can't even swipe, what do I do? Well, they have the physical page turn buttons on there, so you can actually use those. So that makes sense here. It doesn't really make sense on the Kindle Paperwhite 4. All you have to do is tap the, uh, the standby slash power button once, and then you get completely out of that. Looking at the page display, uh, after the update, it's actually, get out, oh man, see, these are synced, so it's like it's screwing me up here. Um, after the update, you actually have to take two steps to get to this screen, whereas in the past, you would just tap the double A button. Everything's the same here. We're just going to swipe through these really quick. Page, reading, and the very new themes tab that you can check out on our individual videos of each of these. But that basically allows you to pre-make some themes. So if you want something that, you know, is a much larger font with, uh, you know, more bolds, you can do that. So let's go and long press on something and that will show you what's going on there. Oh, Oasis 2, man, come on, hurry up. Uh, translation still works, highlight, notes, annotations, shares, everything is still in place so you can have the best reading experience you want. Everything is up in the top corner for bookmarks and x-ray still works but is right there so feel free to really soak in the screen sizes of both of these and just just bask yourself in how very large this one really is. The screen size is very apparent when it comes to PDFs, but how does it do with pinching and zooming? They both have their little mini map on the top corner. Uh, the Kindle Oasis 2 is displaying a lot more text, so you will see it blur out right there right there and one more time right there and that's because it's displaying so much more information than the kindle paperwhite 4 that it actually has to uh almost refresh itself while it's in this fake a2 mode for it to actually function uh yeah that's just the battery low don't worry about that and um on the Kindle Paperwhite 1 and 2, PDFs didn't even really work. And if you're just joining me, this is the first time I'm saying it. And if you've seen all my other videos, I've said this six times. This actually had a lot of RAM issues. The Paperwhite 1 and the Paperwhite 2, in some cases on the 3, before the manga model, this couldn't even run PDFs. It would say insufficient RAM, uh, force close, it would crash, uh, does not have enough memory. There's all these things that would show up. So it was a little bit of an issue. Translation still works very well. Um, the highlights and notes all work on here. Uh, the Amazon line of devices is one of the fewest that actually allow you to do long presses on bodies of text even though these are both side loaded content. And it doesn't get more apparent than this. If I was holding a manga in Japan like that you can see how big it is on my hands but if I'm holding it like that, that's actually more indicative of an actual manga size. So the Oasis 2 is displaying far more text and more imagery than it does on the Paperwhite 4. Obviously, they're very different screen sizes, but that's just, it goes without saying. Now, 
The Oasis 2 had borrowed the engine from the Kindle Paperwhite 3 manga model in allowing you to speed run through the book, do rapid page turn systems, and actually you can choose your percentage at which you want to move, which is really cool. Man, that, I really got to charge this, but whatever, let's just power through this and then we'll be done. The uh, Kindle Paperwhite 4, I was worried if it would have that or not, or there would be a manga model Paperwhite 4 that would, would charge you more and make you purchase and, and only be locked to, you know, Japan or America or, you know, be very restricted. But they put the engine from that manga model on both of these, which is really cool. And I love to see that because now you don't have to buy a dedicated manga model. You can just buy the 32 gig variant or with LTE even of the Kindle Paperwhite 4 or just buy the Oasis 2 and have an amazing manga experience. Pinch and zooms on both of these are basically identical. They both have their mini-map. The mini-map does not show the actual image itself. It's just a blank white square, rectangle, sorry. But they both display text very nicely. They're both flush screen and bezel, so you get that very raised appearance on the uh, screen. It, it, they're both very solid manga readers. This has auto brightness on the Oasis 2. This does not. You both have the little slider Mega Man life pellets there. Uh, why neither of these have any sort of warm lighting or orange LEDs or something with a different degree of Kelvin is beyond me. These are both uh, ninth and 10th generation Kindle devices. Um, man, uh, I think they would have really hit a home run if they put some sort of warm lighting on these like basically everyone else and their mom is doing right now. So light distribution is solid. Uh, light distribution stopped being a thing a couple years back. I remember when the Nook Simple Touch came out, there was like two LEDs at the bottom. You could only see 80% of the screen. The top was gray. There was tears in the screen. Lighting has really come a long way. Uh, distribution and the spread is very nice. If you look at all the corners, you no longer see a whole lot of uh, puffing and gray clouds. So they're both very nice and they both have a lot going for it in the light department, even though you can't change the color. This wasn't a competition because they're very different and they're actually really both expensive now. Kindles used to be, you know, $49, $59 at their lowest peak and now, you know, with the Samsung Galaxy S9 being like $1,000, the iPhone uh, X, uh, S with the full capacities, like, you know, $1,800 in some markets. This is actually 400 plus dollars in Canada. And this is almost 300. If you get the 32 gig LTE variant and you live in Canada, these are getting very expensive, but it really shows why this has a full automatic gyroscope with automatic lighting. This is a flush screen and bezel with, you know, the 32 gig LTE variants. I mean, they, they, they show why they're expensive, but they are both expensive and they're both the latest release of Amazon devices. Um, this continuing the Oasis line of devices and this continuing the Paperwhite line of devices. What happened to the Voyage? We don't know. It's somewhere in between that is we're just not going to focus on because the Voyage seems to be yesterday's news. For GoodyReader.com and a comparison Comparison between the Kindle Paperwhite 4 and the Kindle Oasis 2, this is Peter, have a good day.